and we're here with LaDonna Mixon. This is Beauty Superstars. We're in our in our um, private group, and we're here to talk about marketing. So um, I'll just share a little backstory um, as far as LaDonna and I coming together. Um, over the weekend, or maybe late last week, um, we discovered um, I discovered here in my home in Raleigh, North Carolina, um, the new show on Netflix. It's by the producer writer of Blackish, and it's called um, Hashtag Black AF. And there's definitely a lot of swearing and stuff in it, so I won't replay any <laughs> of what we what we heard. <laughs> but there's um, all of them have really great lessons and messages in them. Um, but this one in particular, um, he went to see Tyler Perry to kind of get some advice or what have you as far as um, just getting a little overwhelmed with, you know, can you critique, you know, other Black artists and um, mm -hmm. and just, you know, how do you kind of teeter-totter between like, how do you represent yourself? How do you stay centered in yourself and work with and um, communicate with, connect with your audience? And um, Tyler like really went in and broke it down. And he was just saying how he and his audience just share a language and, you know, like it's a shorthand. And so he knows who his audience is, he knows who he is, and he knows who he wants to touch. And so um, in my message, it's like I, I put, you know, it's like if you're marketing to everyone, you're marketing to no one. And we really got to think about niching down in some new ways, you know, with everything that's going on. And so, Anyway, the next day or so, I saw LaDonna posted something about the show and talking about marketing. And so we connected really briefly and we're here today. So I want to kind of turn it over to you just to tell us a little bit about you and your background and the things that you have going on and, you know, anything you want to, to say to embellish what I shared about the episode. I think you hit it perfectly. Um, my name is LaDonna Mixon. I'm the owner of Sankofa Creations Salon and Wellness Center in Jacksonville, Florida with clients in Houston. Although I just have to pray for my Houston clients right now because I'm unable to travel. <laughs> right. But um, I have been in this industry and in this business for nearly two decades, almost 21 years now. And I'm at the place in my career where I'm kind of um, creating, um, I've had to niche down as we're going to be talking about, and it served me very well because like you said, we just, we can't talk to everybody. Right. So and if you're the jack of all trades, you're the master of none. So I've learned that pretty early on and um, creating a specific lane for myself in the natural hair niche of our hair industry. And um, so I'm just happy to be here today to discuss that with you because that's something that I've been learning you know, been studying, you know, uh -huh. consistently mm -hmm, and being a part of different circles and talking about marketing. And so it is very possible to continue to have a thriving, successful business, mm -hmm. even in these times, right. you know, by niching down. Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there any, um, and thank you for joining me. It's like, this is um, <laughs> fun for me to have, you know, some conversations around this. Yes. And um for you, like, you know, we're all in the midst of a pandemic and um, it's affecting us globally. It's affecting us locally. Um, we're watching different parts of the country think about opening up and that type of thing. Can you share a little more as far as like what you have seen as far as niching down with your marketing and how it's helped you during this time? Well, I'll tell you for every, I feel like every and not necessarily a pandemic as widespread and hard hitting as this one. Right. But remember when we had that big crash in 2008 and different things like that. So because I niched down and I, and I talked to a specific audience within my hair business, right? Mm -hmm. So I do natural hair. I specialize in holistic beauty wellness and with natural hair and locks. So the majority of my clients are lock clients and ha they have natural hair. So they don't, you know, get any type of chemical services or any, uh, very few thermal services. And so what I learned is before, when I first got out of beauty school, it was like, I want to do, I knew, I knew specifically that I wanted to do natural hair, but I got a full cosmetology license. So I could do nails. I could do, you know, uh, pretty much anything within our industry. But I knew very early on that I wanted to just chiefly do natural hair. And I'll never forget the director of the uh, beauty academy that I graduated from in uh, 
Norfolk, Virginia, laughed when I told him, I just want to do natural hair, but I want to be a licensed cosmetologist. He was just like, natural hair, okay, whatever, you know, and here we are, you know, mm -hmm. this is a huge impactful industry in itself, and it is an example of niching. Right. And so what I was able to do was just say, hey, that is my linear focus, only natural hair, and you wouldn't believe how many people tried to talk me out of, but you're so good at, you know, you can do cur curling hair, you can do all this mm -hmm. other stuff, oh, you would make so much more money if you did X, Y, and Z, if you did blowouts, do you still press? I didn't want to have anything to do with any of that. And so now that my clients and I, and the, my specific audience are professionals, it's like, like when you're creating, I know you probably talked to your clients about this too, creating an avatar where you're sp speaking to a specific type of clientele, mm -hmm. which is really what niching is. You're speaking to a right. segmented you know, audience, a specific audience that you're speaking their language, like Tyler Perry said. Mm -hmm. He's very clear on that and I'm very clear on that. I, I listen to their pain points. So for example, you know, surveying my clients, I heard that a lot of them don't like the typical, you know, beauty salon environment. They don't like to wait. They want one-on-one -on -one attention. Some of them are struggling with, you know, different hair issues, hair loss and different things like that. So they want privacy. Some of them have never done their hair on their own before. So that's okay. another specific niche. And then some of them are just like, you know, for whatever reason, I'm tired of the chemicals. I want to just transition. I need help with that. And I, you know, depending on their profession, you know, they always have to maintain a certain type of look. And we know that I was in corporate America for nearly almost as much as long as I've been in business. And I remember being the only person in the room with natural hair, the only person in the room with locks in executive circles. And um, so I speak to that client. Right. because I've been there. So I speak their language. I, I'm talking about their pain points. So that's how I was able to build a clientele that most of them are professional. You know, they are people facing. They they have really well-paying jobs. They're, you right. know, they're very visible. They don't have time to do their own hair. You mm -hmm. know, they do prefer that one-on-one -on -one attention. So I affectionately named my business and Copa Creation Spalon, and it's combining the word spa and salon. Okay. And so when I, when I target my clients, they know that when they come into my space and they call it an experience, right? Mm -hmm. They right. come into right. my space and they're getting a therapeutic, relaxing experience. I've even had some clients say, I just want to come early so I can just get my tea and just relax. And I'm looking like, no, <laughs> don't come <laughs> early. But you know, that speaks to the type of, you know, environment that I was able to create by niching down. Right. And so those are the types of clients that, you know, I... I um, service, and even now during this pandemic, I, I recorded a tutorial for the first time the other day. Oh, I've wow. never done a tutorial. I've always wanted to, but you know how it is. You're like, I don't want to be in front of the camera or whatever. Right. <laughs> so I recorded a tutorial about lock retwisting uh -huh. at home. So maintenance care at home. And everybody watched it, and I've gotten some video responses back like, hey, look at my work. I tried to do it. Do you know that from that video tutorial that I posted, I've got like 10 bookings for a future date. I'm not open right now. Right, right. I am not open right now. You know, in the state of Florida, we're still, you know, following the stay at home executive order. And I'm hearing that they're going to be reopening, you know, certain businesses up. But for right now, my business is closed. Mm -hmm. And so for me to do that video, you know, it was just a, an offering to my clients for them to say, Okay, yeah, I watched it, I tried it, but I still want you to do my hair. Right. That speaks <laughs> to the effectiveness of being able to niche down. <laughs> right. Yeah. And with the appointments, were they all people that already came to you or did you attract some others um, that hadn't? I did. I got a few new clients. I would say probably out of out of the six that booked immediately, like within an hour of watching that video, okay. two of them were new clients. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think there's so much um, power in, you know, us offering things to our clients while we're not able to actually physically service them, that there's so much right. that they're in need of. Mm -hmm. And that by knowing your niche, that that can be a way to, um, you know, to really connect with people mm -hmm. on a different level. You know, it's like mm -hmm. you can't physically touch them, but it's like you can help them navigate this. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, right now it's such a, a crazy time for many um, people and like, you know, I would assume some of your clients are probably in the work from home category. 
yes. since they are, you know, professionals and that type of thing. And so they've got the work from home going on and they've got the kids having homeschool going on, maybe a spouse that's working from home, you know, feeding everybody and kind of keeping up with everything yeah. <laughs> and carving out some time. And then, you know, it's like, it's almost still like, well, where does self-care fit in? <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, so any little tips and, you know, it's like, I've been, you know, I can't go get a pedicure or anything. So I'm like, it's getting to be spring. At some point, I'm going to want to put on some sandals and stuff. So it's like <laughs> each day, I'm like, you know, when I get out of the shower, I'm just doing a little bit of something. But, you know, it's like, you know, just tips like that that can help people navigate what we're going through. Um, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And I would say, you know, at first I was kind of like, well, my clients, they don't, they're not DIYers. But I was wrong. You know, they are DIYers to an extent, but at the same time, they still value that, you know, hands on that environment because they're coming to us for an experience. Exactly. You know, because anybody can do lottery twists and maintenance. Anybody can do an updo or, you know, shampoo your hair real good. You know what I mean? You kind of think that's a loose everybody. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, being, I'm being graceful here. <laughs> Yeah, but definitely I think that as business owners that we have to create an experience for sure. And that is what people come back for. And it's like, I think no matter how many times you watch YouTube, you cannot shampoo your hair the same as it is laying back in that bowl and getting that experience. Um, and so, you know, it's, you know, in a sense sad right now that a lot of the, you know, kind of younger stylists are saying, oh, just come with your hair shampooed. It's like, that's the best part of the whole experience. Yeah. <laughs> and you become a commodity, you know, where it's like, like you say, anybody can do X, Y, and Z versus someone where they know it's like, okay, each time it's going to be consistent. This is going to be the atmosphere. You know, it's like, I'm going to get that one-on-one -on -one service, all of those things that they're looking for. They know that they can trust because that is, you know, you and your brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I had a couple of things I was thinking about with you know, how do we do this? You know, how do we get out of a mode of, um, oh, I hope everybody. And, you know, I hear that a lot, you know, as a coach and it's like, no, it's like, you can't help everybody is number one. It's like, you can't afford to market to everybody, even mm -hmm. if you could service everybody. <laughs> right. And um, for most of us, it's like to have a full book. And I, I sometimes ask people this, you know, what would it take for you to have a full book? And they're like, oh, I don't know. It's like, well, you know, it's like, that's kind of a starting point. And for most of us, you know, it's like, if we see, you know, say five or six clients a day, maybe, um, maybe on the lower end for some and the higher end for others. But, you know, if you work five days a week, that's 25, 30 clients a week. And, you know, even if they come in once a month, that's about a hundred clients or so, you know, we don't need mm -hmm. millions of people to come to our business <laughs> if we right. can keep them coming back. And so, you know, it's like targeting in on who are those people you want to spend the day with, you know, and spend your time with. And one of the things I was thinking about is that you, I think what I've seen in the industry anyway, is that you always kind of attract who you are. Right. Do you feel like that? It sounds like it from what you were describing. Absolutely. Speaking their language is, is essentially like what I did was create an avatar of myself. What would I want to experience too mm -hmm. in this industry? You know, I've always loved private service rooms and environments okay. where it's just one-on-one -on -one connection and, mm -hmm. um, you know, a therapeutic, like what would happen if I merged a salon and spa together? How would you feel? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so right. from the surveys, I'm able to determine that the language that, that I was speaking, they're also speaking that too. So it's okay. almost like you're, you're drawing them in, you know, based on like how Tyler Perry said, I speak their language. They know me, they recognize that voice that's speaking. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just drawing from my own personal experiences about, you know, going to the salon and what, what do I want to expect out of it? You know, that was the, the number one pain point that I addressed, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I think, you know, when we, well, number one, it's like, let's backtrack a little bit. Tell me what an avatar is. So an mm -hmm. avatar is basically like your ideal client. It is basically the caricature of the person that you're speaking to. Mm -hmm. So for example, like how I mentioned speaking um, their language and talking about the pain points, 
I created, it's helpful to do this and I would recommend that everybody does this because it helps you hone in on the type of language that you need to speak. But having an avatar allows you to specifically create a concept of a client, right? It could be based on yourself. It could be based on your friend. Um, so for my clients who are professionals, they're within a certain age range. They have a certain uh, demographic that they exist in with what type of money they make. I mean, we're so specific. And uh, a lot of this information you can even get, you know, online. Um, where they hang out? Are they, do they have a family? What magazines do they like? Do they belong to religious organizations? Do they be belong to any type of business affiliations? Mm -hmm. You know, what do they like to do in their spare time? So crafting this allows you to really get specific. So once you know this avatar, where they hang out, what websites do they frequent? What platforms do they like to visit? Like, are they on Facebook a lot or Pinterest? Are they always on YouTube looking at videos? You know, that's where you want to be speaking the language of the pain points that they have. So that avatar allows you to be effective and super niching because you want to make sure that you're positioning yourself, you know, in front of the types of clients that you want to draw into your space. Like you said, everybody can't sit in your chair, right? but you have the right and the power to choose who sits in your chair, what type of environment that you want to create, not just from the, end, the users, but from, from our end, you know, that's an experience too. And right. if you have people who you know, constantly love the information that you're given and they're loyal and they really enjoy being in this space and it's a reciprocal, you know, relationship. Those are the people that's going to constantly be, you know, booking and keeping you booked back to back. And that's right. such a great and freeing feeling. I had this one client when I was nervous and hesitant about um, changing up some of my prices and taking off some service offerings that I was offering. And I was like, oh my gosh, well, people want this and one client was like oh my gosh I found you because you were the only person that I found that does hydration treatments mm -hmm. that's just steaming you know but I was speaking that language so she specifically searched for hydration right you know what I mean and so she uh -huh. found me and became like a recurring client and it allowed me to expand so then I was able to super niche so so people love hydration and you know steaming what else do they love I also added hot stone scalp massage to my service mm -hmm. menu mm -hmm. and scalp exfoliation and those types of like really specific spa type services and people are eating that up right I mean but we wouldn't know that unless we start to do the research to find out like what it is that they desire. And that comes from like creating that model client, that avatar. So you can speak their language and draw them to you. Right. Yeah, I think that was a wonderful description of an avatar. And for some folks that I work with, I like to take it like another level as well, like to kind of look at your ideal client, like of your clients, existing clients, who is that person that's, you know, always there, always, you know, the one that's doing this or wanting to try that, you know, it's like that person to kind of take them and kind of encapsulate them as well mm -hmm. and look at specifically like where do they, you know, participate in church or some type of religious thing are they in a sorority and and really start to kind of break it down that way is awesome and in addition um you know I had a, a salon in day spa I was one of the first African-American owners in the country you know quite a few years ago now but um we did surveys with our clients mm -hmm. we did in-house surveys with our clients uh, we were growing, um, you know, we were part of the Salon Today 200, um, fastest growing salons in the country for like three consecutive years. And so wow. we had a lot of growth and we wanted to make sure that we are providing the services that the clients wanted. And we also outgrew our first space. And that's how we went into the salon and spa um, because we needed to expand the salon part and some of our clients were going to regular spas where you go for a week or you know, several days or what have you and they take care of you hand and foot. And so we before making that kind of investment because a lot of people are like, oh, you know, I love spas. So I want to open a spa. It's like, mm -hmm. no, it's like we went to our clients and we had a kind of a round table. It's like we invited about, I don't know, 30 or so of our top clients and really kind of a mix, not just, you know, top clients that come all the time, but some that come more intermittent and some that spend at different price points and said, you know, it's like, we're thinking about this. What are your thoughts? And, you know, what would you be willing to spend? And, you know, what services would be important to you? And we really crafted the, 
the salon and the spa around that feedback. Mm -hmm. And that made a huge difference in, you know, being able to, to continue the, the business because we were listening. And even with the, we did like a paper survey before, and of course they have stuff online now, but um, I think even just us having that, let people know that we were listening and mm -hmm. wanting to know. Yeah. Which a lot of times we're just like, oh, well, you know, it's like, especially online, you see so many things where it's like, well, I just fired so-and-so, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and it's like, no, find out what, you know, what went wrong. Right. As you know mentioned one... a good point too. Um, I recently, as a result of that lock retwist video, I created a survey on Google Forms. I didn't know uh -huh. we can do that, but that was my first time creating it on awesome. Google Forms. But I just really wanted to ask some questions about was it effective? You know, uh -huh. um, would they be interested in further trainings? And out of the training topics I listed, which ones do you want to know more about? Styling, technique, or products? You know, and then um, because someone else sent me a text message, a client who um, is a realtor. And so she said, you know, I tried my best, but I still want to sit in your chair. By the way, would you be interested? Would you be willing to do like a live class where you can like watch us or, you know, take our questions? And I was like, oh, OK, because recently one of my mentors showed me a video of a beauty um, makeup guru. So what she's done is created a live class for her clients. And it's like you can get that live one on one with me. And what she did, which I think we should all like really, you know, take a page out of her book was she created an infographic where it had your, your makeup bag tool toolkit. Mm -hmm. And it had all the items that you would need for class, right? Okay. And my mentor said, well, you know, one step further she would have done was sent that infographic with clickable links to like an affiliate link on Amazon so they can purchase that, okay. right? You uh -huh. see what I'm saying? And so, um, you know, I thought that was really cool. So she's offering services on, I'll watch you do the makeup and I'll watch. Right. So, I was like, oh, I don't know if people will really want that, but I added it to the survey. Would you be interested in a live, you know, one-on-one -on -one learning live? And would you believe that more than half of the surveyors <laughs> said yes? And yes. I was like, wait. So I'm like constantly blown away at this, but you're right. We have to listen to what right. they want because we could be like, you know, I'm just going to do these videos or I'm just going to stick to this exactly. type of teaching. And that might not be what they want at all. <laughs> you know, and it's right, also making us right. step out of our comfort zone too. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Sometimes <laughs> that is the case. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's so um, wonderful to hear, you know, that they're saying, you know, these are the things that we're looking for. And I think that's even an opportunity over Zoom, you know, where you can do it virtually. It's like you could watch yeah. someone do their twist and it's like, no, no, no. You want to take it a little bit more, you know, this way or that way or what have mm -hmm. you. And so there's opportunity to do, you know, consultations, if you will, um, mm -hmm. by Zoom to do, you know, once we open back up to do, you know, live classes when we can not have to social distance, which I don't know if that'll happen or not, but <laughs> <laughs> where we could do, you know, like a small group class type of situation. Mm -hmm. And um, you reminded me, actually, it's like I have a friend, she's actually one of my coaching clients as well, um, but she's been in the industry about probably in the 30 year range. And she's had, you know, that kind of every two week, every week clientele for like that long. And so with this, you know, the, the looming shutdown that was coming, what she did was put all of her um, packages together for the retail that they would need to use at home because they mm -hmm. never shampoo their hair at home. They don't know how to do anything. And so she kind of walked them through and had the packages, like you were saying, together. So they picked them up, you know, on their visit, you know, which was probably going to be prior to the, the lockdown. And I think she said she did more than, um, she sold more in retail than she would have made behind the chair. Mm, that's and so smart. Like, I'm changing my <laughs> my thinking, my model, my, you know, <laughs> everything yeah. that there's so much more power. And then of course, after doing it for so long, our bodies are, you know, saying it's like, okay, you know, how much longer do we want to do this? And, you know, <laughs> and all of that. So it just creates some other avenues. Mm -hmm. um, and I've actually done some, I've been doing some profit plan meetings with people where we just do like a 20 minute session and kind of direct, you know, where they want to go. And one of the people I met with a stylist and um, 
And actually, I don't know if I said hi to everybody. I'm trying to keep up with both um, Zoom and um, <laughs> and Facebook, but I think there's several people on Facebook. So thanks for joining us. I haven't called you by name, but I appreciate you being here. And um, but looking at the um, like the way we do business going forward is going to be completely different than anything we've known in the past. Mm -hmm. And the more I read and the more I see as far as all of these different, um, you know, requirements, you know, in terms of safety and sanitation and all that kind of good stuff. It's like, we really need to start to look at what are our other options as far as, you know, if I'm going to be behind the chair part of the time and if I'm not going to be behind the chair part of the time. Right. Yeah. So have you started to look at, um, you know, how to restructure your business going back or forward? Yes, that's a real conversation that I was having before we shut down. So mm -hmm. I have been working with business coaches at the beginning of the year. Well, I'm crafting my personal brand. I wish I had done that prior to, but I was so young when I first started, you know, <laughs> cosmetology and everything. But now, you know, as an author and writing books and blogging and podcasting, it's like I'm honing in on some of those personal objectives and goals um, and, and the inspirational side that I'm, I'm normally operating anyway. So now I'm crafting that into my personal brand and building that a lot more. So yeah. that's been wonderful. Um, but in addition to my salon business, it's almost like, like what you were saying, we have to start thinking about what's that next plan. Right. And so what I was thinking was I wanted to launch a natural hair or holistic natural hair mastery school at the end of the year. And so <laughs> I was laying the framework for that. And it's like, oh, well, you know how they say man makes plans and God laughs. Well, this is one of those situations because it's like now thrusting me to, you know, record the videos and do all of that before right. I felt it was almost like this thing like, oh, I'll get to it like around fall or third quarter. Right. I'll get, get around to it. But now it's like, oh, this is real right now. It's time for you to start that planning in place, which right. makes sense because we are responsible for, you know, creating what we want. So what exactly. that looks like for me is, you know, mentoring more, stepping from behind the chair as much, teaching and pouring into what I have, because here's another pain point for our industry. A lot of people are complaining that, you know, I, I, nobody's ever taught me that about what to do for my scalp and hair, or I didn't know you can do this, or you're the first person who ever taught me X, Y, and Z. Mm. Or, you know, I went to someone else and they're using this and that on locks and it caused my hair to be flaky. So we can't really fault them for not knowing, you know what I mean? For example, the, the right technique or the right way if we aren't teaching the right way. Right. So we know that in cosmetology school, you're not really learning the ins and outs of the industry and how to right. successfully run your business. And, and I'm pretty sure that's why I created the avenue for you to go into coaching and mentoring. And so that's, you know, what I see and I'm listening to certain things and it's like, okay, we have to step up and be the teachers for everyone else who's coming along. And I think I had this conversation with you the other night mm -hmm. about a client who, you know, the young people are, they're so energetic and they're really ready to get out and do, do, do. And that's awesome. But we were talking about Yoni steaming and how I, mm -hmm. I, I mentioned to her that I wanted to get this certification. I was finishing up my classes to be able to offer that in the spa setting. And she was like, oh, really? And I'm, we're talking, she said, I didn't know that there was an actual certification. And so I was just doing them, but you, you know, like we talked about, there are certain mm -hmm. contraindications to that. You can't just let people steam without really like screening them and knowing what's best for them. And the same thing with our industry, we can't just like send people anywhere without knowledge. And so we have to be the ones that bear responsibility, you know, to take up that leadership, to create the next generation of stylists and, you know, natural hair specialists or locticians mm -hmm. that are going to do the right thing. Right. And so, and that creates a lasting legacy. So if I, in my mind, I was like, if I create this program and I create an apprentice program and I have people working with me, then I can let them have access to my huge clientele list. Right. You know what I mean? And my clients yeah. will be more receptive to them doing it because they know I've taught them, you know, the way that I do things and, you know, the way that my brand operates. So they know they're getting professionalism, integrity, they're getting, you know, great styling, but they're also getting... The, an environment that it has foundationally built on those things. So right. that's what my plan yeah. is. I, I mean, I don't know. I'm just staying prayers, <laughs> <laughs> but that's what the plan is for now. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I saw um, it may have been a post a little while ago. It was like this was not on my vision board, you know, like this whole coronavirus. At all. <laughs> So it definitely is um, <laughs> definitely an interesting time and definitely a, cha a challenging time and a time of transition, which is really mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, but it's like if anybody has any questions about marketing, about um, kind of narrowing their niche or what have you, um, to feel free to jot it down or, you know, send a message in the um, Facebook group because I think I can see them. <laughs> okay, so there's nothing in the chat here, but so I, I can't see what's on Facebook. Okay. I'm not sure how we did it. No, I, it may have been that I was the only one that could see. No, I'm trying to think. I don't know, when we practice with it, it's like, it seemed like my friend could see, but I, I'm not 100% sure. And see, um, I'm not either. I've not done a Zoom live yet for, yeah. I've done it for book club, the book club members, because we had okay. a virtual but I've not done it for a client. So you're teaching me now. And I think okay. that that would be a good pain point for stylists who are having to kind of cultivate ourselves into this digital technology age. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? There's going to need to be some trainings in place. And Definitely. You know, we're going to have to learn how to, how to navigate, you know, these things. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, that's actually been a little bit of what's on my mind is like, how do we, um, you know, how can I kind of help people navigate you know, I, I'm thinking like a 50-50 stylist, you know, you're in the salon part of the time, but you're running another business, you know, that's mm -hmm. digital. And um, and just, you know, a lot of things that I can share to help with that. And so I'm kind of thinking about it, it's running around in my head. But um, one of the, there were a couple things um, that I thought about with, you know, kind of getting prepared for this. And one um, is being, a big fish in a little pond. Hmm. And I don't know if everybody's heard that expression or not, but um, on the show, Kenya Barris, who's the creator of, of the uh, hashtag uh, Black AF, as well as Blackish and Mixedish and some <laughs> other movies and everything else that you may have heard of. I wasn't really that familiar with his name, but I've also had those experiences where I've been like, you know, who do I want to serve? Who you know, how do we want to serve? And, um, and, you know, being a black person, being someone who can do any type of hair, mm -hmm. um, my salon and spa was a black salon and spa. We worked, you know, primarily professional women. Um, and when we had the spas, like we actually got a feature in essence that we literally had people coming from all over the country to come and get services. And it was, it was crazy. It was fun, but it was, um, um, at that point really good that we had a clearly defined niche of who we were <laughs> but um prior to that it's like i had a conversation with a friend it's like that uh, salon that i had before the salon and day spa was in you could call it like a small suburb off from a major suburb mm -hmm. and um so i was like you know thinking about how do we do our advertising and our marketing and all of those types of things to really create what we wanted but it's like first you got to figure out what you want mm -hmm. and so she was like you really should kind of focus on being a big fish in a small pond rather than trying to you know go into the other um, suburb and all of that just focus all of your efforts on this particular town and um, so what we found was that the people read their, they got a gazette, a weekly gazette, and people would grab it from the, you know, driveway or whatever on the way in and they'd read it. And so we did ads in there that were really, um, you know, had a great response. Um, we were probably the only black salon in the area. And I had worked in a salon not too far away, but in the bigger suburb that had been extremely successful by being kind of the only black salon that was in that area. And so it really helped us um, to, you know, niche down or what have you. But I definitely understand that feeling of, you know, should we go here or should we go there? Mm -hmm. So if you had any experience like that, it sounds like your experience was pretty, you know, it's like, this is who I am and this is what I know I want to do. Right, from the very beginning. And so to hear you say that, that is interesting. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. I'm wondering, like, I can understand the pull to want to cater to a, a lot of different types of audiences by being a big fish in a small pond. 
That's really cool. I wonder if a person could benefit from creating, um, like you said, a network of people that maybe a referral system or maybe like an affiliate. And I'm just thinking out of the box here. Right. Like, you know how Amazon has their affiliate links. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. if you had a small network of people that you're training and you're mentoring and you're funneling clients that way, depending on their specialty. Right. And they, they could like possibly pay a referral fee or you could get, you know what I'm saying? So maybe that could be a way that, that you know, big fish could operate in little ponds by creating like tentacle networks. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know what yeah. I mean? It still yeah. allows you to operate in your niche, but also be a resource to other people who may need right. your expertise and, you know, knowledge. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's, there's always, I think, more than we can do. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. um, having good places where you can refer. Um, right. I think you know, like you were saying, it's like part of our success was from, you know, training our team to be able to, you know, from mostly assistants, some of them came in as seasoned stylists, but they fit into, you know, our um, vision of the salon and everything. But mm -hmm. um, that was great for the clients because it's like they got to experience them and grow with them and feel comfortable stepping into their chair. Right. which is definitely key um, to have room for this overflow because it does keep um, growing. It's like in the beginning, it can feel like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get off the ground or never going to have enough clients or what have you. But then it just becomes a big snowball and it kind of mm -hmm. keeps going as you continue to, to do your marketing. Right. I know part of the thing that I was fearful of when I when I finally left corporate America in 2013 and you know I had this wide open schedule and I was thinking to myself well will people come because I was used to working after my job right mm -hmm. in the evenings or on the weekends in the midst of choir rehearsal and all that other stuff and with <laughs> family and everything like that and I was like well they come during the week if I'm open in the mornings mm -hmm. and that question was answered quite fast because there's people out there that's just waiting for an opportunity to come that's not regular salon hours you know they're right. wanting to come during the day so it it, it taught me to not be limited in and what I think you know right, right. people will want or, or you know whatever but yeah yeah and definitely I think with timing it's like we have to um in some ways, I think this time is is bringing out like what's most important, you know, mm -hmm. what really is most important. And for some people, it is being able to have hours where they can be home with their kids in the evening. It may be, you know, that you're an early morning person. It may be that you're a late night person or something. It's like, I want to, I don't want to go into the salon until two in the afternoon and I work in the evening. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the beauty of this industry is that we can kind of design it the way that we want it to be. Right. Versus mm -hmm. a lot of us being just pulled in a bunch of different directions and you know like oh I have to go I have to do and you really don't and and that's you know what my friend and I are going to have a conversation about as well um just designing this life the way that you want it to be mm -hmm. and knowing that there's a niche of people somewhere that will fit into that right, right into that so mm -hmm. yeah and even the Saturdays that was one of the things that we were going to talk about um with one of my friends is like she was a single mom and decided she wasn't going to work on Saturdays because that was going to be family day to go to the zoo and go mm -hmm. here and to the museum and so on and so forth so she never worked on Saturdays while her kids were young and she survived you know what right. I mean <laughs> mm -hmm. and so it's like there's always ways to do things and I think um that we have to stay open uh, I just attended a, a webinar last night and, and one of the, actually his shirt had it on there as well, but it was just like, what box? You know, like, <laughs> we're, you know, we're busy thinking outside the box, but what box? You know, it's like, why do we even think there's a box? You know, right. <laughs> that's part of the challenge that we've got to mm -hmm. say, wait a minute, there, there is no right, wrong, in, out, you know, it's like we, we get to create it in this right. industry. And speaking of that, how do you feel about, you know, the fact that there are varying opinions about right, wrong, returning to work, not returning to work? Mm -hmm. Because in my mind, this is this time off is giving me, first of all, I'm going to say I'm very thankful to have this time off to where I can really work on my other brands and work on my business and, mm -hmm. and really take time to go 
go for a run or stick my toes in the grass. And I'm usually just busy, busy running around. So I had to really get used to that, that home life for a minute. Like, wow. Right. I, you, so when I cooked a meal, it was like, oh, I can take my time and not burn everything. It was like <laughs> a really fluid experience. Right. <laughs> and that felt really good to me. It felt really like um, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so to your point about the non-Saturday work days, I really saw that too, because at some point I was working like every Saturday, you know, sun up, sun down. And I was like, no, I want to go and play. I want what I call to my clients. I want to go outside and play. Right. You know, I want some <laughs> Saturday to myself. And, you know, it, it's just not available on my scheduler. So I don't have to explain that I'm really just at home sleeping in for once. It's just mm -hmm. me time. So right. I'm hoping that through all of this, you know, we gain a greater sense of, like you said, what's important. And the other thing I'm battling with is like, how I feel about returning to work versus not returning to work. So mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that's been a lot of conversation in your groups too about that, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And mm -hmm. I, I have my own personal opinions that are <laughs> fairly strong. <laughs> and I do know other people as well, but um, yeah. I'm a stay home. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I kind of look at things with my own logic, I guess, you know, like I always have, it's like, I just kind of look around and survey and see, it's like, okay, well, that makes sense. No, that doesn't make sense. And right now, um, what I felt and heard a lot of in the beginning was a lot of panic, you know, like, what mm -hmm. are we going to do? Oh my God, you know, and I said, I was going to do something like that, like having financial peace in the middle of the storm, because yes. Um, overall, I've just been peaceful and it's not like I have a big stockpile or something, but you know, it's like, I've just been through so many different things that I know this too shall pass, you know, it's right. like, and it's like, and I'm still here from all the stuff I've already been through. So it's like, mm -hmm. I'm just refusing to go into panic mode and, right. you know, it's like panic mode is what makes us make not so great decisions. Absolutely. You know, like, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. No, you really don't. You know, it's <laughs> like the, <laughs> the things that we need are really simple. You know, we need a roof over our head, some food, we need <laughs> some electricity and some water. Mm -hmm. And other than that, everything else is kind of just extra, you know, it's yeah. nice to have, but, <laughs> it's just extra. Um, but if you can make it through this time with those things and, you know, nobody's doing, you know, evictions and foreclosures and all that kind of stuff, and they're not going to turn your lights off and it's like and there's some food you know then you stay, stay home <laughs> stay out of the way it's like i feel like we're not essential i have um i know four four people that i know have um been positive for the virus mm -hmm. and one was relatively mild and um and has recovered thank god um her her husband is actually in the hospital still mm -hmm. and it's going on probably about six weeks of him being sick. A lot of it in wow. really, you know, teeter tottering kind of situation. And mm -hmm. I, you know, she does like a daily praise report and we've had prayers and, uh, you know, prayer calls and that type of thing. And just seeing all of that, it's like, you do not want to go through that at all. Mm -hmm. Um, I have another friend, um, Charles Gregory in the industry who passed away from it. And it's yeah. like, he did not make it. And um, another friend who I think wasn't formally diagnosed, but was down for like a, a good month before mm -hmm. he started feeling a little bit better, not severe, severe, but severe enough to be at home in bed for a month. And that's severe to me, you know, <laughs> that is. and um, it's just like, none of this is worth it. It's like, I don't see any hairstyle that I could think of that would be <laughs> worth it. <laughs> yeah, right. Worth any it. amount of money that would be worth, you know, risking your life. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just like, let's stay home. You know, it's like, we're not essential, you know, so you know, I, I like that we're not essential. It's like, I already know that we're valuable. I already know what we do for the community and for individuals on a personal level. And some of that we can do without touching their hair. Mm -hmm. It's like that communication and that relationship that we build up with our clients. It's like, we can still have those, you know, phone calls and stuff like that. But, um, and we can still help them, you know, with navigating, you know, taking care of their hair and all that kind of good stuff. But, and as I see it going back into the salon with, mm -hmm. you know, all of the protective 
gear that we need to wear. I said, we, we have, you know, I have, I guess I can say, and for most of the people that I know, it's like we worked in a sanitized environment anyway. Right. Um, I know there's some who are like, oh yeah, I should have been doing, you know, that kind of thing. So I get mm -hmm. that. But for the most part, we've already been in a sanitized environment, but mm -hmm. what we're needing to go back into is a sterile environment. I'm like, right none of it sounds like fun to me. I'm like wearing a mask all day and gloves all day. How do you curl with gloves? Your clients got to have a mask on. How do you do half their hair stuff with a mask on? And then they're like, don't talk because it, you know, it can spread. And I, I personally think it's airborne, but they haven't mm -hmm. officially determined that. But um, it's like, if I can't talk to my client and I can't do her hair, you know, with any kind of ease and I can't do this and she needs to put something over her shoes and something on her. And it's like, a, it's just like, oh my gosh, like this Don't is forget taking their temperature too. Man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is just like, this is literally a whole new world. And it's right. like, it, it just seems like, okay, a lot of the fun of doing it is out, of, you know, it's gone. That's true. Um, so what do you say to your, uh, uh, the, a person who's coming to you for mentorship and say, mm -hmm. for example, that's all they have, or they don't have the support system, like unfortunately that a lot of us do mm -hmm. to be able to stay at home. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you say to them? Cause I know that there's resources, you know, I got a text message the other day asking me, did you apply for, you know, this loan or that one? And all of a sudden I see all those things come through, mm -hmm. you know, no responses, I'm, uh, you know, people are applying for certain grants that are available and no right, responses. Right. And, and, you know, we've heard that, that, you know, that surplus that was available for right. businesses and well, a lot of small businesses don't even meet the mark to right. even qualify for that. So right. it's just wondering how, how are you um, helping to kind of calm <laughs> the herd mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. those that look to you for guidance that, you know, like you said, you know, are panicking out there and, right. you know, you want to make sure that you're inspiring and, you know, creating a sense of peace and giving right. people who, actual practical tools on what they can do, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, definitely, I think that's in order. It's like I did do a segment like on seven steps you can do with your finances to really mm -hmm. kind of put things in order. But first, it's like take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> it's like when we're in a panic, it's like we're just like, no, but I have to, no, but I have to. And it's like you yeah. can't even hear anything. You can't see anything. But if you can take a deep breath, sit still for half a second, yeah, just breathe in and breathe out, maybe pick up a pen and paper. You know, it's like however you want to do it. It could be a dear God letter. It could be a just a like all the rumblings in my head say, I got to go do this da -da 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 -da, and just let it all run out. And it's like hairstylists are the absolute most creative people that I know. And you can't tell me that you can't create something different than what you've already created. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like you have to be out there doing hair, it's like something wasn't working in the first place. Mm -hmm. So it's like, let's stop for a second you know, do you have a place to live? Okay, most of us do, thank God. Do you have um, any food? And it's like, if you have any food, then we can make it to, we can get some more food. Are your lights on? Are you, is your water running? It's like, if you have a car, do you have any gas in it? Mm -hmm. And it's like, let's start from there because that's all you need to take care of. Mm -hmm in reality. And if you can't take care of stuff, start calling people and telling them, I can't take care of stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a pandemic. It's like, I've done this when it was only my personal economic disaster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's right. like, pick up the phone and call your creditors and, mm -hmm. and let them know. It's like right now- Have those real conversations. I'm not able to do this. And it's like, I've picked up the phone this time. It's like, you know, it's like, okay, what can we do? What are the options? And everybody that I've talked to has been willing to work with you. If you get some jerk or whatever, that's like, oh, well, you got to da, 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 da. Thank you. Hang up and call back because you know you're going to get somebody different. So, <laughs> but, um, you know, we're responsible for taking care of all this. I'm not one of those that says like, oh, well, you don't owe it. You don't have to pay. It's like, no, you owe it. And when yeah. you call, find out what is the arrangement that you're agreeing to. Mm -hmm. You know, are they adding it to the back of it? Will it have interest? Will it impact your credit score? Mm -hmm. All of those things you can ask right then and know what the consequences are 
And it's like, and right now it's like, we need to take care of right now mm -hmm. and we can take care of those consequences as long as we know what they are, it, you know, as we can transition into something else, being able to generate some income. Mm -hmm. But there's, there are jobs that are available that are mm -hmm. a lot less close contact. Right. Because they're still not even sure if six feet is enough. And I'm, six <laughs> oh, tall. I'm tall mm -hmm. and I have long arms and I can't work six feet away from my client. No, you know? <laughs> no one can. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so yeah. it's really, um, let's look at this from a higher level. It's like, I, I got this, um, I have this book that I use and I share with, with people sometimes and sometimes I forget about it, but it's called 10, 10, 10. And you're looking at any situation, any question, that you have in the frame of reference and, and writing it down for some of these bigger decisions is really helpful. You mm -hmm. know, what is, you know, it's like, and you have to ask it in the phrase of a question. So what was your question to me? It's like, how do you, how do you make it if you are the only breadwinner and you have mm -hmm. kids to take care of and all of these things. And so let's look at like pros and cons in 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, I feel like I'm going to go under. I'm going to be homeless. I'm going to not be able to feed my kids, not be able to take care of the stuff I, you know, usually am able to take care of, assuming that you're usually able to take care of it. And that's what some of it is for us. It's like pride where we haven't said, you know what, I need help right now. And everybody else in the whole world is needing help. Big mm -hmm. banks and, you know, and little businesses and big businesses and governments and you know like everybody is needing help right now um and so then let's look at it in 10 months 10 months from now this is what is this april we're losing track of everything right <laughs> so um <laughs> so what 10 months will be like february of next year right february of 2021 look at that same question in that light of do you really think you'll be homeless? No, you're probably gonna find a way to make things work out. Even if it's prayer, <laughs> just as simple as like, oh God, I have absolutely no idea how to do this. But assuming you're in that situation where you feel like I have to work because I have to take care of my kids and I have to do this, what happens if you get sick? Mm -hmm. And you're in the hospital like my friend's husband for four, four to six weeks. Mm -hmm. In completely incapacitated, no, you know, no contact, no nothing. You can't do anything for anybody in that state. And the last 10 is 10 years. Let's look at that question and look at it from 10 years from now, the pros and the cons. And I think a lot of us, the book was written because most of us spend our time in, in one or two of the places. Mm -hmm. We're either looking, oh, down the road, it's going to be so great and this, that, and the other. Or we're like, oh my God, it's right here is a doomsday. And we don't look at all three. Mm -hmm. And this gives you an opportunity to kind of look at all three time frames. And for a lot of things, when you get to that 10 year mark, it's like, it won't matter if I go left or right. You know what I mean? <laughs> but a right. decision like this, it's like, if you're not here, if you're incapacitated for however many weeks or what have you, that may have a really long lasting effect on where you are 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. And I'm just a big believer. I feel like all the church and faith and spiritual learnings and stuff feel like they've like sunk in that it's like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's like there will be, you know, just as sure as we came into it, we will go out of it. And we don't know what that looks like. We don't know what, how long we're going to be in it, but there will be an out. And when we get out, we'll make some different choices. We'll do some mm -hmm. different things mm -hmm. and assuming we're still alive. Right. And how do you think that this will shift, you know, our industry going forward though? Well, it's like, a, there's a lot of shifts that have to mm -hmm. take place. So one is um, no double booking mm -hmm. and triple booking. Like some of oh, us are working. Yeah. You know, it's funny that you say that because I've never, it's, it's, okay. So when you asked me earlier about like, you know the pandemic changing things right i've always operated with a sense of social distancing in my salon like uh -huh. i've never i don't ever double book or tri triple book and i and people would say oh you can make a lot of money that way but it's just something about having so many people in my space that really irritates me okay <laughs> and that's how i built my business model around like you know right, it's a right. private you know and that's what i market it's a private one-on-one -on -one setting you know you you have me all to yourself 
right. you know, right. I don't even take calls, uh-huh. you know, when I'm with, the, right. you know, it, it's just that specializing. So, you know, when you talk about, like, we talked about sanitation and sterilization, the fire industry, we should have been doing that anyway. Right. We, you know, we should be mindful of not to be piling clients on top of each other anyway. So it's right. almost like it is bringing us back to a make sense approach. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of it will be like what we sh- kind of should have been doing all along. Mm-hmm. Um, people don't believe it, but you can make a very nice living not double booking. And it's like, I haven't, uh, I have done it in my career, but I haven't done it in years. And I really did try to space people um, out. So it was a flow to right. the day because um, I hate, you know, like the eyeballs lined up looking at you like, I know I'm next, you know, <laughs> I can't all of that. that. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, it's like for some people, it's like they, you know, may work with an assistant. They may, you know, double book that way where it's like, okay, I'm doing the foils for the highlights here. I'm, you're doing this part here. And that's four people automatically. Right. And depending on how, sp- how big your space is. And of course, most of our shampoo areas are not six feet apart. Right. So that means one, maybe two, depending on how many bowls you have one, maybe two people can get shampooed at a time. You know, there's spacing for stations that needs to happen. So it depends on how big your space is, how many people work there, how many clients they have. If everybody in your salon is in, you know, like a traditional salon and everybody's kind of, you know, stacked right up together and there's, you know, four or five, six of you and all of your, you know, each one of you has one client. Right. And maybe a couple of you have an assistant. You're already... (laughs) And that wouldn't be an unusual thing, you know, prior to this, but it's right. definitely something we have to prepare for. Mm-hmm. Um, with Georgia opening back up, you know, it's like we need additional supplies that we more than we would have needed before as far as Clorox and wipes and um, we'll have to have masks for ourselves, which we didn't have to have before. Right. Um, capes are an issue, you know, how do you do those? Do you use something disposable, you know? which is, you know, more expense, you know, do you have enough cloth capes, which is a big expense if you're buying them up front, do you have enough cloth capes for each person to have their own thing? Um, The laundry, you know, I thought about, you know, it's like, not only should it be covered, which it should be anyway, um, your soil towels and stuff like that, but you need to have gloves on when you're doing the laundry, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which is something new. It's like, who even thinks about, you know, that? Um, the client, they need a mask. So who's supplying the mask? Mm -hmm. What if they come? Oh, I forgot my mask. You know, it's like, (laughs) so we're going to have to have some mask on. Someone was Mm -hmm. talking about hair color. It's like, if I have a client with a mask on and I put hair color on, there's going to be active hair color on the mask. So I got to take that mask off. (laughs) Maybe she has to process without a mask because it's like anything we put on, but you don't want color sitting on her skin like that. Right. Even while processing. And then after she's going to need another mask. So that's two masks, you know, (laughs) two masks already. (laughs) And we haven't even started curling. I know, I know. And then, you know, we're supposed to work in gloves and, Mm. um, you know, some kind of covering and a mask. So it's like, I still haven't found a mask I can breathe in. So I'm really prayerful that I will find one. Right. (laughs) I feel like I'm breathing heavier and breathing probably more particles into the air because I can't breathe in this stuff. Right. So we got to be in a mask. We got to wear gloves, but who can wear gloves while you're curling? It's like, that's not going to work or happen. And a lot Mm -hmm. of what we do is tactile. You know what I mean? It's like, (laughs) we do what we do because we're good with our hands. And, you know, it's like, I use gloves, you know, for all the chemical services and all that kind of stuff, but I can't wait to get out of them. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so to think about working in that all day, it's, um, you know, plus, you know, take, like you said, taking the client's temperature when they come in, um, even things like uh, refreshment areas. Some of us have had those types of things in our, in our, you know, midst and everything needs to be, you know, self-contained. So you could have like a cookie that's sealed in something right. and tongs to pick it up. So people aren't, you know, digging around, you know, <laughs> so you know a bottled water, you know, it's like you, you know, pretty much need to hand it to them, you know, where they're not touching anything else. And there's, there's a lot to think about, you know, mm-hmm. and there's a lot to do even to kind of get the place ready 
for that, you know, moving furniture, making sure that everything is, you know, how you're going to work, especially if you don't work alone, you know, how will you arrange your clients so the shampoo bowl won't be an issue? Right. Because <laughs> um, that, you know, how impatient we can be. It's like, I'm waiting for the bowl. Hurry up, you know, <laughs> on a good day, you know. <laughs> right. right. And so there's, there's a lot, a lot of considerations. And then the cleaning products, that's mm -hmm. what I was, was saying. It's like, there aren't any cleaning products, you know, to be purchased. So it's like, how are we all going to open up and all going to have, you know, Clorox and, you know, we have barbicide, hopefully we have some, but depending on how much cleaning we were doing beforehand, it's like, we may be even lower on barbicide. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's still fairly accessible. Yeah. Um, but if you need any wipes for different areas, which, you know, like your scanner cards and all that kind of stuff, they're talking about just doing cashless, payless things, Cash App, um, Zelle, what are some of the other PayPal, I guess is something they can do on their phone and you mm -hmm. get it from, from there. Um, you know, it, or it's paying it's, from the appointment link. That's yeah. what I do. So I don't even touch. Right. Right. Do. Yeah. Right. But then that means whoever is coming in has to have that type of thing set up as well. And which, you know, like your clientele, a professional clientele, that's probably not going to be an issue. But some clientele are more of a cash and carry type of, of operation. And right. so there's a, there's a lot of things to consider. And then, it is. you know, when we talk about the experience, it's like, what does all this do to the experience? That part. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's going to feel like a laboratory. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, this is going to be like, you know, the dentist office or the, you know, something. But it's like, you don't spend that much time in those more sterile environments. But mm -hmm. it's like, we've gone from sanitation to sterile. Right. And, you know, what are we wearing? You know, it's like, even when we go home, it's like, we need to get right out of our clothes and get rid of those. They're saying it can last in your hair. So how does that work? And, you know, so... <laughs> It's so many risks everywhere. It's risk going to the grocery store to, mm -hmm. you know. Right. It's so much. And this has definitely shifted the way we just live our regular lives. We have exactly. to be mindful of everything. Yeah. And I, I don't think it's ever going to go back to the where it was, but mm -hmm. hopefully it will get past where it is now because it's right. It's, it's like, woof, you know, <laughs> it's yeah. like, and it's really taken all the fun out of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Because I would do, I didn't overbook. I stopped doing clients in August, um, so, but I didn't overbook. So I do, you know, color and I usually sit down and talk with them while their color's processing. So we have mm -hmm. a nice little time or what have you, but it's like, now I got to sit six feet across the salon, you know, how are we going to have a conversation? You know, they're right. not supposed to be talking much. That's mm -hmm. part of the fun of the, the visit, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. So this, this brings us back to the conversation of niching and, and figuring out, you know, innovative ways that we could be useful, especially yes. since a lot of us have years and years of experience and expertise, there has to be something that we can teach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or something that we can offer, you know, yeah. to our clients or something that we can create. Yeah. Um, and I, I think, you know, like sometimes we lump, you know, I'm a good stylist and that's all I know how to do into one mm -hmm. big lump. But typically it's like, if you have a nice clientele, it's like, you're good at customer service. You're good at listening. You're good at like all these other skills that go along with it that you may not realize that mm -hmm. you have more than you think you have. And so there's yeah. ways to to transition that into something that might be something a little different. And then some of us have hobbies and things yeah. might be a way to generate additional income. Right. Um, I've been seeing, like you said, the cooking that's like, I've been seeing a lot of, a lot of um, stylists <laughs> throwing down in the kitchen. Yep. Like, <laughs> because we got to eat. That's the one thing we're doing is gaining that COVID. <laughs> but yeah, I would say too, um, you brought up a good point, just figuring out what we're good at and what, what our offering could be. And, circling back to our earlier conversation is surveying people to see, you know, just that simple question. I think I started out years ago saying, hey, what's one thing you come to me for that you say I'm good at? Mm -hmm. You know, if you had to come to me for one thing, what would it be? And that's how I was able to craft my mission, teach, inspire, right. create, because that's, those are the three things that people said, no matter what I did, mm -hmm. those three things were, you know, prevalent in every single thing. And so it helped me create another avenue or another um, niche of clients that I can kind of talk to who right. desire that 
you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, I think we just have so many more gifts than sometimes we give ourselves credit for mm -hmm. that it's really time to tap into the gifts that we have and see, you know, how can I be of service to the community yeah. that I've been servicing or maybe to another community? As I did see, you know, with talking about the cooking, it's like I did see um, a stylist and she's an educator as well. But it's like before this, maybe a month or two before I was, you know, seeing her, she started preparing meals, you know, to sell. Mm -hmm. And it's like, she's like, okay, I'm sold out of this day. And she put a menu together each week and she'd do all the cooking and have everything portioned out. And, you know, it's like they were, you know, doing pickups and drop-offs and that type of thing. And so she continued it after the shutdown and everything. Cause it's like, people want some food to eat that they didn't cook, you know? <laughs> that is definitely a pain point to address. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's, you know, another thing to look for. It's like, what do people need? What are people looking for? Right. And how can we service it, you know? Well, I'm going to need to get some more practice in the kitchen before I offer that. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had to look up a YouTube video on how to make an omelet the other day. Don't laugh. Oh, I But it was laugh. real in that kitchen. I was yeah. like, okay, you know, it's, it's simple things like making sure that it's not, the pan isn't too hot. And, right. Yeah. You know, but to say. add some, the chef added a little, little bit of water to the egg mixture and that blew me away. I was like, what? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So I learned something new. So, hey, just exactly. how to make the omelet, it did me good. So Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and omelets are a little tricky too. So it's like, that was good. <laughs> but yeah, I think that this time is, you know, for us to look to see what's important and to really kind of get a sense of breathing. Because a yes. lot of us, like you say, have been running around so much. So mm -hmm. it's like, I guess this has been wonderful. I definitely appreciate you joining me. And it's Thank like, you. I love the insights and everything that you shared. I'm, I'm not keeping up with, with Facebook so well. Uh-oh, I hear some rights. Okay, someone, oh, Nishan says she can curl with gloves, my sister. Uh-oh, uh, what kind of gloves? Is she using like fabric gloves? See, here we go. Or you know right. what I mean? I think they're plastic gloves because she has difficulty with um, skin and breakouts and stuff like that. Mm. Um, yeah, so we've got just a couple of comments. I don't see any questions that we're missing. So okay. I guess we'll, um, we'll call it an evening, but this has been wonderful. It's like, hopefully yeah. we can do it again. But um, with niching, it's like, I really hope that you guys got something out of this um, to take with whatever you could come up with. There's lots of different ways that we can generate income right now. And I think now like you, you're doing LaDonna is to take this time to prepare for the next chapter. I call yeah. it kind of a do-over. It's like, you know, what will be in place that wasn't in place before mm -hmm. because you've had this time and this space to, um, to be creative. It's like, once we can take a deep breath and get out of panic, it's like, that's when the creativity can start to, to flow where Absolutely. you can get that little divine nugget <laughs> or inspiration that says well, oh, such and such, you know? <laughs> yeah. So if anybody did have questions about niching, I did put together some resources that I can post in the group. Oh, awesome. Oh, that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yes, we definitely appreciate that. And there's one thing I didn't get to, we didn't really get to talk about, so we'll have to save it for another time, but just okay. that whole authentic and authenticity. Um, to the. Uh, <laughs> to the the niche puzzle so mm -hmm. we'll have to um explore that further yes but um yeah i think this has been really good i hope it's been helpful for people that are watching um and you know uh someone said a, a while ago as a um a partner she was an accountant and we worked with her with doing some things with our beauty superstars and she was like the riches are in the niches Ooh. I That's like good. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So remember that. Yes. And if you're having trouble narrowing it down, it's like pen and paper, pulling it out, you know, seeing who are you, first of all, so that you can know that you're going to attract who you are. <laughs> right. Um, then looking at, you know, like you say, either your avatar or, um, you know, ideal client that's actually your actual client and seeing, you know, what are the traits and things that you like so that you can mm -hmm. create an ideal clientele and mm -hmm. an ideal business going forward, right. whether that's online or offline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So any last words before we depart? Not really. I think we covered a lot. I did want to share that quote that Tyler Perry said that he got 
Okay. Nina Simone, did you remember that part? He said, you will use up everything you got trying to give everybody what they want. Yeah. And that really stuck with me. So that was, that was a good nugget. So yeah, yeah. I would encourage everybody I to start that. researching <laughs> that, that niching process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I love, you know, him talking about the language and, you know, and you can use shorthand when you're talking to your, your people. <laughs> right. And talk about super serving your niche. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's like, if we look at our existing clientele, it's like, there's got to be some other needs that they have in their life. Right. Start and with so, a survey. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Start with a survey, you know, and listening and looking and calling and asking, because it's like, if you don't ask, you're really not going to know. Right. Um, yeah. Some of you may be good teachers. It's like, you know, where you are able to work with the kids and that type of thing. It's like that may be a little niche that you can carve out for yourself while we're down. Mm -hmm. So there's just so many things. And um, where can we find you? I'm on Facebook now. I just rebranded my personal Facebook um, business page, but the salon business page is Sankofa Creations Salon. And I can post the links in the, in the group if you wish. And uh, my personal page is LaDonna PM. It's really my initials. Okay. Know, LaDonna purposefully made. So that's been my, you know, Perfect. brand moniker for, <laughs> you know, going in that direction. But I'll post both of those in the group link. So you'll post this after. Is it live? Then like, you'll see like the link yep. to the Zoom after. Okay. You should see so, it. Well, okay, you can cool. see it in the, in the live. Okay, perfect. I'll post Hopefully. it in the comments. <laughs> Fingers crossed. It will, it will. Okay. <laughs> I'll post it in the comments after. Okay, yeah. perfect, okay. perfect. And um, just to let people know, it's like I'm going to be doing a webinar next Tuesday for the um, um, natural hair community. It's like I actually have a lot of clients that are natural hair specialists. And so I'll be doing, uh, it's called What's Your Profit Plan? And it'll be tips to work on for now and later, um, how to survive now and thrive later. And um, there's something else I'm going to be doing that I just forgot about, but I'm going to be doing something else. So I'll keep you guys posted and I'm working on a new website. So I'll have some new goodies and stuff coming up soon. So uh, we'll keep you posted. So everybody stay safe, stay home, stay alive. It's like, that's what I <laughs> want you to do. <laughs> and you can prosper from home. So Take good care and great to talk with you, LaDonna. It's like, Thank you for having me. Yes, yes. So it's like, we'll have to do this again. Yes, ma'am. So everybody have a wonderful night. Keep reaching for the stars. Bye-bye. Good night.